Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. So I've already loaded my object. I've gone into the shading tab, enabled viewport shading and have a principled shader and material output applied. So if we take a look at that in the materials tab over here, it's just basically a new uh, material here. We are going to change the base color a little bit by decreasing the value, let's say to 0.5. We'll increase the metallic setting to one, roughness to 0.05. And everything else I think we'll leave as it is here at the moment. Next up we're going to add a noise texture. In fact we're going to need three of those so I'll just duplicate those with shift D while we're here. On the first one, the bottom one, we're going to press Control T for a texture coordinate and mapping node and plug the object into the vector of the mapping node. Factor of this is going to get connected to the normal of the principal shader, but we need to convert this using a bump node. So we'll grab one of those and then just drop it on that line and just move this from the normal to the height. Drop the strength to zero, sorry, 0 0.01 and the distance to 0.5. Basically what that's done is just given us a tiny bit of roughness, a tiny bit of um, detail to the surface. It's not just simply smooth metal. So this, this and this is giving us our metal surface. So what we're going to do is select those all and press G to group those and then use this up arrow, the parent node tree, to go back to our overall view. And you can now see those nodes have been kind of grouped together in the, the one there. Next up, I'm going to grab a mix shader, drop it on that line. Then I'm going to grab another principal shader, plug that into the mix shader at the top, not the bottom. And then we've got a few bits that we need to put in between. So let's grab a color ramp. This is what's going to add the color to the rust. I'm going to plug the vector from the mapping node into the vector of the other two texture coordinate, uh, sorry, noise textures. The factor from the top one of those is going to go in the color ramp. And then that's going to go into the base color of the principled shader. I decrease the mix shader to zero that's going to basically give me this top node tree I've currently cut off this bottom one by decreasing that if I just wanted to see this I'd go all the way up to one so dropping that down to zero for now so we can just see how the rust texture is forming and I'm going to add a third color in here and change that mode to B spline I'm going to change the colors using hex values here. So we're going to go 9A6231 for that color. You'll probably guess I'm going for rusty colors. 4C2409. And for this last one, 190C03. Okay. 
looks good. But I'm going to move those about a bit. I'm going to move that one in further. And that one closer. So they're kind of a bit of a pairing. And then this one I'm just going to drag in a bit further. There we go, that'll do. So let's say 0.25 for that one, 0.5 for that one, and let's just round these up, 0.85 for that one. Right, now I need another color ramp. pop him there, take the color from my first color ramp into the factor of the second, and take that into the roughness of the shader. Then I'm going to switch these colors around. So white comes first and then black comes in at about let's say 0.15. So as you can see, we get a roughness, but we also get a little bit of shininess. That was the goal there. And the closer they get, the more of this sort of rough rustiness that you get. Okay, let's turn some of that into height. So we're going to grab a bump node, plug the color from our colored color ramp into the height. I'm going to duplicate that and connect it with the normal. And then that normal is going to go into the shader. So you can see there's some height differences happening here already. I'll increase that second one to two for the strength. And then next up, I need to add another color ramp. Chuck that in here. Take the factor from that second noise texture into the factor of this color ramp. Plug the color from here into the height of the second bump node. And then take the color from this color ramp and plug that into the factor of the mix shader. And you can see things are already happening. Drag the sliders for those colors let's say to 0.45 and 0.55 oops, for the positioning and you can see how it's separating it out right now which is good that's what we want now just changing up a couple of things on these two noise textures I'm going to increase the scale of that top one to 25 and the roughness to 0.65 and then for the second one dropping the scale down to about 1.3 and the detail up to 6 and the roughness to let's say 0.9 maybe yeah that works for me Okay, let's just go and take a couple of things, check a couple of things here. For the metallic, I am still going to add some um, value, 0.15, but nothing more. Anisotropic, I'm going to increase to 0.5 and just randomly choose the rotation. And 
and then I think we should be fairly done. Okay, let's just reorganize things a bit. So this is our metal. This is our rust. And these two are generally what's controlling the mix of the two. So let's group those so that we can get a clearer node tree. So as you can see, you can control it with this and also with this. This controls the um, amount. The more black there is, or the closer the black gets to the right, the more rust there is. So there we go. And then obviously we'd send that to render. And there you have it, you can see how the bump of the mixed rust actually affects the lighting, which is good. Um, and you've got that sort of different shading. So there you have it. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel before you go today. And of course, do remember to give the video a thumbs up. In the meantime, thanks for watching.